you know, the Earth is this really unique place, right? Billions of stars, billions of solar systems, and we happen to have this only one that we know of that supports life forms like us. And so it's about preserving and protecting it for as long as we can. And so sustainability comes down to me to economics, it comes down to the environmental aspects, making sure that we're not polluting our own home, but also that we're doing things where we can economically sustain ourselves. You have to look at the full life cycle of, of what a technology is that you're going to put in the ground, how it performs, what it uses from a water standpoint, um, can the materials be recycled in the future. If we um, essentially have the value that sustainability is also has to work from an economic standpoint as well, if you have greater efficiencies from products or greater results from them because of new and advanced technologies, you're going to be essentially getting more out of that investment and therefore it pencils better. And right now, roughly a billion people, one-sixth of the planet, does not have access to clean drinking water. And in 10 years, it'll be two-thirds of the planet. I mean, these are dire things. And I know most people can see this and think, well, that's other parts of the world. No, I'm talking about here in America, we're going to have millions upon millions of people that don't have access to fresh, clean drinking water. You know, cities have had record droughts for the last 10 years. But when you have a drought year after year after year, it's not a drought anymore. That's just the way things are. A drought almost implies a temporal condition. A drought implies that, oh, it's just now, but it'll go away. No, these are persistent droughts. And the idea of persistent drought means that we have a water crisis. We don't need new technological revolutions in order to get to where we, we, we need to be. We can get there with the technology that is being developed right now. We don't need any new radical breakthroughs. What's necessary is to put the technology that we have into play and put it to use. I think there's a couple things going on that are very important to think about in terms of where our low carbon future should go. One is that we need to, of course, reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emissions, but we also need to clean up the life cycle of lots and lots of products and hopefully generate an economy that doesn't just cut carbon, but also is one that puts more money into the hands of local communities, that makes local sustainability, distributed energy, more reliable, higher quality, low carbon, all of that's got to be pulled together. And concentrating solar is one of those emerging areas where we can think about sort of getting the environment and the economic story aligned. Water is, in my view, next on the agenda for things we need to make part of our sustainability plan. Technologies that are so-called open cycle, that take water out of lakes, reservoirs, and use it once through, like some traditional fossil fuel power plants do, are really a challenge in that regard. They are water intensive. Many of the biofuels are also in issues where it takes hundreds, if not thousand gallons of water to end up with a gallon of the biofuel. But technologies that close that loop, that don't require water in their operating cycle, or that recycle the water, those are really attractive in terms of carbon and water management. Concentrating solar is an example of a technology that once you've made the cells, you don't need water in open cycle. You can really just run a you know, closed solar cycle and that's it. Our biggest platform in my lab to think about clean energy is a modeling tool called Switch. And in that, we build and plan for new power plants, new transmission lines, new levels of efficiency use. And we're always looking for technologies that allow us to open whole new avenues. We're also looking for technologies that allow us to dramatically increase the amount of energy output per built area. Because we want to minimize the footprint on the ground, the amount of overall area we use. And concentrating solar does that to a degree that almost nothing can beat. Because it maximizes the energy output per unit area. As we think about urban environments where space area is limited, it's a natural fit. And as we think about integrating in solar and massive amounts of efficiency into the basic design, we use the switch model to look at those applications. Concentrating solar takes exactly that story to kind of a logical extreme. The least amount of the photocell, the maximum amount of harnessing light onto those cells to make them as efficient as they possibly can be. So, I see it as a way to make large central station systems that are breaking new records all the time for their efficiency and their power output.
And so not trying to tell people what to do, but trying to demonstrate there can be lower and lower impact solutions. That's really why this technology is very exciting.